It pains my heart to see that the Venture Brothers has been cancelled, though perhaps it had to die. Perhaps it had to die so that it may sojourn through the tortured plains of Tartarus. The show upon its own hero's quest, the myth, and myth itself, a veritable Oros Boris of tale weaving. Because only by walking this grim fandango through unlife could it be reborn to shine once more upon the screen, a blazing phoenix resplendent with the fell boon that comes from having been reborn from unto death. I mean, it's been on seven seasons. That's like a, that's a pretty good run, right? So back on February 16th of 2003, Venture Brothers premiered on Cartoon Network, and it is sadly now dead. A moment of silence for our dear fallen friend. Uh, though I have read that there are some talks floating about about thawing out one of the clones from the basement and keeping it going on like HBO Max or something. For those of you who don't know, Venture Brothers is a series that ran on Cartoon Network for like 14 years. Uh, started out, I think it's safe to say, as a lampoon of Johnny Quest, which I happen to actually really liked a lot. Uh, <laughs> is really, though, so much more than jo that, uh, and it always has been so much more than that. Uh, I think that Matt Covell actually said it best in this tweet that I saw the other day. I don't normally just like take people's tweets and read them into the show, but Matt really nailed it with this one, I thought. I'm not personally a Gen Xer, but I get this. Uh, so here's what he had to say about it. If you want to know what it's like to be a Gen Xer, digging through the wreckage of a plane that our grandparents built, and then our parents flew into the ground, trying to find just some piece of anything that might still create sparks, you will see it somewhere around season three of The Venture Brothers. I like that. I think that's really good. Matt has a way with words. He knows that, though. Now, there's something in the show called Doc Tales. Doc Tales. And you guys have been asking me to make Doc Tales for a while. Throughout the series, we are treated to a number of Doc Tales, these very, very special drinks created by Doc Venture. There are a couple on the show that we really just don't have any recipe for whatsoever. One of them is the Hot Mummy. We just see it. We don't really know anything about what's in a Hot Mummy. And I'm not going to guess today. We'll maybe save that for another episode. Uh, there are at least three, though, that we get a very good description of from the Doc himself. And today I'm going to make them. May God have mercy on my soul. So let's call this Cursed Cocktails Volume 2, The Doctor is In. Because without a doubt, these are all 100% cursed. Uh, the three that I've got really solid intel on are the Ruddy Bottom. The Hunchback. Red Moco Cooler. Which must be kind of a favorite of Doc's since it shows up in the show many, many, many times. If you're detecting that I am uh, plucky and very uh, definitely care, it's because I haven't touched these yet. I don't know exactly what I'm getting into. I haven't made them at all. I've made a plan for how to make them. We're just going to do it on the show. If I had made them first and tasted them, it would really ruin the effect because then it would not be my first experience of the drink. Right? Anyway, I want to start with the ruddy bottom. Um, it appears so far as I know in only one episode in season six. The episode is titled A Party for Tarzan. And it is described as a tall glass of grenadine and tomato juice with a jigger of rum. I should say that this will cover us for all the episodes that apparently all of the Doc Tales, save the hot mummy, are served in a highball with an umbrella and some kind of a lemon or orange wheel as a garnish. So I'm going to assume the same here. That's how it looks in the show. Uh, there is some question in my mind as to how much tomato juice to use. The way that he describes it is as a tall glass of grenadine, tomato juice, and a jigger of rum. So what does that mean? A splash of tomato? Is it 50-50? Should I spin my wheels a bit and carbonate the tomato juice since it is actually a highball and treat it that way? Who knows? I, I'm sticking with the most basic interpretation of what it sounds like here because the show's creator will tell you that none of these are supposed to be good. They are supposed to be nightmares. The next question for the grenadine should be roses or homemade. Uh, even though the doc calls himself a master mixologist, I'm pretty sure he's not making his own grenadine. So let's go with roses. For science! So uh, I am going to shake this. I'm going to do basically uh, what I hear in the show. Uh, a long pour of grenadine. Let's say three ounces. Three ounces ought to do it. That's uh, 90 milliliters if you're a scientist. Um, I feel like it, since it's a tall glass of grenadine with tomato juice, uh, ratio-wise, we need less tomato juice. So I'm thinking one ounce, one ounce, two ounces. I can't decide. There's no rules here. Uh, what will be grosser? Let's go with two ounces of tomato juice. Oh, yeah. 
It's Campbell's, by the way, in case you're wondering. Only the best. And now I need my two ounces of rum. My thinking here is we probably save the good stuff or something else. Anything that was funny enough. <laughs> Anything we add is gonna be just buried. So let's go with the light rum. Bacardi Superior, two ounces. Now, as crazy as this drink sounds, I have a funny feeling it's not gonna be that bad. I think it'll be disgustingly sweet, but like from a combination concept here, you've got a little acid in the tomato and you've got your um, sweet from the grenadine. I mean, it it's way out of whack proportions wise, but it is kind of following the formula for sour. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna crack all of these. And normally, and I, I was thinking I was gonna shake this, but now I'm thinking about the tomato juice, we should actually kind of roll this. Um, because if we don't, it's gonna get really nasty. So I'm just gonna roll it back and forth. By nasty, it's gonna get nasty. It's gonna, um, the tomato juice will freeze if we shake it. It's gonna like thicken and freeze. And it really just won't pour. It'll turn into icy slush. That's it. It's cold, it's wet. Uh, I think that's it. Let's strain that over some ice into my cocktail glass here. Oh yeah, look at that. Delicious, ruddy bottom. My level of energy is very low. I'm not feeling particularly enthused at the moment. Feeling like a condemned man. So I need a straw and an umbrella to drink this with. And we need to have an umbrella because that's how it's done on the show. And this drink is very red, so I like to offset it with a blue umbrella. Ow! Stab me right in the damn hand. There it is. The ruddy bottom. Ah, let's see how it tastes. Uh, with the only toast fitting such a name. You are it all, but you can't have it. All this thing, what is this? Good Lord. Oh God. Sweet Jesus. Oh, wow. I was not actually prepared for just how sweet that was going to be. My God. So it is sweet. It is extremely sweet and very artificial tasting. I mean, it is just red flavored. Yep. It is the flavor of red. Uh, is, there's no grenadine detectable in there at all. There is... Oh, the smell is making my Just like making every... You don't taste the rum. So, I mean, I think that that makes sense too. I don't think that the doc likes the taste of alcohol. My throat is trying to close up on me. Uh, the tomato juice, um, that, is an insp that, is, that is a diabolical addition here. It, the whole thing is overly, disgustingly sweet. I mean, it is a glass of syrup, but the tomato juice, you see, it adds, a, you would think, what does it add? It adds like, like metal flavor, like the taste of the inside of an old can. Some kind of footy, foot funk, foot funk, funky, oh boy. I'll see if I can isolate the exact description of this, this tomato that's in here now. Oh God, it's disgusting. Oh my God. It tastes like sweet vomit. <laughs> it tastes like sugared vomit. That's what that tastes like. Fucking hell, that is bad. I genuinely did not expect it to be that bad. Oh man, that's bad. Oh my God. I have to hit cut now because I forgot my ketchup. I need ketchup for the next drink. Kill me. So I'm going to hit cut and perhaps run a commercial while I go to my kitchen to get ketchup. Stay tuned for a drink with ketchup. My God. Ah, uh, because I am a glutton for punishment. Let's move on to the, the Hunchback. The Hunchback shows up in a very venture Halloween. Its name is inspired by one of Hank's Halloween costumes. And the recipe is inspired by the blood that Hank serves Doc, which is made from mixing ketchup and, and Coca-Cola together. So when the doc is asked about his recipe for the drink. Rust, what the hell is this? Cola and tomato soup? Close, it's ketchup and bourbon. But it's drawn in such a way that it definitely looks like it's got Coke in it. I mean, it's dark, it's got little bubbles floating in it. Also, it's drinkable with a straw, and I'm pretty sure that there's no way to get a mix of ketchup and bourbon to be strawable. I'm thinking he simply disincluded the Coca-Cola from the description. Uh, he probably considers it to, to not be one of the defining characteristics of, of the drink. And in fact, uh, it's Pete White who asks if it's cola and tomato soup. So I'm thinking that Coke is 100% in there. You know, he's like, what is this, cola and tomato soup? And Doc says, no, it's bourbon and ketchup. 
Um, but I, I think that the cola has got to be in there. So I'm going to employ an unusual methodology to make this drink because ketchup is a pain in the ass to work with. Um, and what I've done previously to shooting this is I've weighed out one ounce by volume. I took my jigger, I put it on a scale, I failed it up. Uh, a one ounce or a jigger, in other words, of ketchup, which works out to be 40 grams of ketchup. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put my scale out here and I'm going to take the short tin of my shaker, put that on there and hit tear. And I want to add ketchup to this now. Um, so this is, we're going to start with ketchup. We're going to start with um, essentially two volumetric ounces or 80 grams of ketchup. God, it smells. I'm not a big fan of ketchup. I, I really only like it on hamburgers. I'm not like a ketchup and fries person at all. I think that's disgusting. Don't ask me why, I just don't like it. Oh, 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 we went a little over, that's 85 grams. You know what, I don't think the doc's gonna mind. So I've got two volumetric ounces of ketchup. Now I'm gonna add two ounces of bourbon. Um, a other episode I just recently shot required me to use early times bourbon, so I've got a whole lot of early times bourbon. We're gonna, you're gonna see this disappearing on the show a lot. It's fine, it's fine. The doc, you know, He's not made of money, so this is fine. Okay, uh, I'm gonna add ice and shake that. <laughs> it smells like bananas. Oh, it's gross. <sighs> I've never shaken ketchup before. I have no idea what the results are gonna be. Yeah, there's the bourbon. The ketchup's just gonna hang out in there. It'll come out in the shaker. All right, here we go. Shake that, shake that. Oh my God, possible this really just won't strain. Hmm. Strain that into a highball to the degree that you're able to. Oh yeah, it's working. You just gotta like kind of pump your hand really weird. The old Heinz 57. Yeah, whatever, who gives a shit? This is as awful, this is bad enough. All right, we're gonna put a Coke on that now. I'm try and sneak it down the side because I think that the ketchup's gonna be like a real foam maker. Oh yeah, I like the way they sit on top of each other. That's a good sign. And I suspected as much, but we're gonna have to use a little bit of the old strew. Have to mix that up together. Yeah, I like to see this uh, very nice orange foam developing on top. Great. Needs as always. It's gotta have an umbrella and a straw and I don't know. I think he had like an, an orange wedge as a garnish as well, a wheel of orange. So why don't we do that? Let's what the heck, you know? I have oranges here, they're here for a reason. Uh, wheel of orange or lemon? Yeah, we'll just, we'll use a lemon wheel, what the hell? I think that's what it looked like in the show. I don't remember off the top of my head. One lemon wheel coming up though, all right? Yep, stick that in there. It's like a health drink now, it's a health thing. And here it is, the Hunchback. This is the one I probably dread the most. Oh, fuck, you can really smell the ketchup in there, Jesus. Tasting notes for the Hunchback. God. Oh, I hate ketchup. I have to drink it again. I know I do. This is very bad. Oh God, Jesus. I do this for 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 you. This is all for you, Damien. Look at me, Damien. It's all. faked myself out there. I can't quite, I gotta really get over my nerves. <laughs> okay. Ah, I can do this. Good Lord. Oh, it keeps turning on you. Ooh, it gets worse. Ah, ah, okay. Ah, you don't taste any bourbon in there. That's got me. Oh, maybe I do a little, I don't know. Yes, slightly. It up in my nose now, very late arriving bourbon, ah, but early, like it's just this unbelievably foul, tangy combination of ketchup and Coke, carbonated ketchup. <laughs> How can I describe that flavor? Oh, it's like drinking soured milk, just like curdled milk, not like curdled, but like soured, like old bacteria infested milk. Um, cause it is just like tangy and thick and bubbling and wrong. Um, and has a very 
displeasing evolution. It does a lot of twists and turns where sometimes it's a little more tangy. Sometimes it's a little bit more cokey. Sometimes it's coca tang. And they combine into this new color that shouldn't exist in our plane of reality. I want to spit so bad. Oh, I'm honestly contemplating rinsing my mouth out with the other one. I'm so, I just want, I'm reaching for something. I never leave myself water on these because it would be cheating. This is horrible and it is significantly, yes, this is a respite from that. Oh, the hunchback is horrible. That is not much better. Oh, I can just like suck on this lemon. Yes, that's better. That is good. Ah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Feeling better now. Wow. Tangy Coke. Tangy thick Coke. Ketchupy Coke. That's what it is. It's Coach Shop. Catch Coke. I'm like breaking out in a freaking sweat. Oh boy. Well that most unfortunately this brings me to the famed and Infamous red mocha cooler. It's a combination of Kahlua, Hershey's chocolate syrup, and a light dusting of red Kool-Aid powder. That sounds horrible. I'm pretty sure I've watched every appearance of the strike of the show, and I don't think he ever gave a really specific description for how to make it. Uh, there is a specific instruction for how to make it that appears on the fandom wiki. Excuse me. Oh my god. Ha. Ha. Um, and according to the footnotes, that seems to have come from the creator's commentary on the season three episode Orb, which is actually the introduction of the Red Moco Cooler. That description involves taking a glass of Kahlua and adding Hershey's syrup to it until it's almost too thick to drink, and then sprinkling a dusting of red Kool-Aid across the top. I'm drinking it like that. Don't mix it up because you want that dusting to stay on there like a crispy little skin. So the way to do this in my brain is to start with the Kahlua and add the Hershey's. Because if we do it the other way, you could end up adding too much Hershey's and then you won't, you know, you have to be almost too thick to drink. So let's add the Kahlua. I'm a bit unsure that means of how much Kahlua to start with in the glass uh, so that I leave enough room for the Hershey's, right? I would venture that two thirds of the way up for Kahlua is probably right, but maybe I'll start with 50-50. I'll pour half of a glass of Kahlua and then add Hershey syrup to it until it's too thick to drink. And if, if needs be, if it gets too thick, I can always add more Kahlua, right? Thin it back out. The next question that you're probably thinking is, should this involve ice? I mean, yes, probably, but they didn't say that on the commentary. And since we do have actually a specific set of instructions here, I've kind of got to do exactly that way or the internet's going to get angry at me. Um, so no ice for now. Let's add our Kahlua to about the 50 mark point of the glass. It is now occurring to me that this is a tremendous amount of Kahlua. We're gonna need you though, so stand by. Um, and now some Hershey's chocolate syrup right to the top there. Great, perfect. That's exactly what I wanna put in my body. And then we wanna add a crispy little skin of red Kool-Aid across the top. Um, the fun thing about this is that this is for two quarts of something. Oh, it smells, man. That is a powerful smell. Yeah, it really just kind of needs the whole thing to really kind of build up the skin. And it does want to sink in. It is kind of uh, absorbing into the drink. Oh, my God. Ha! <sighs> Let's taste this. Do you think I should use a, um, a straw? In the show, whenever we see him drink, when he, it does have a straw. But in the spirit of doing exactly what it said in the commentary... This is uh, Red Moco Cooler number one. Good Lord. It's gonna dye my freaking teeth red. This is gonna be disgusting. Or black. No, most likely red. Here we go. F fucking. Oh! <laughs> the Kool-Aid is so tart. Who, why? Who knew? That is a powerful flavor. I did not realize the Kool-Aid was that f powerful. Oh, it's like burning my lips. Okay, it tastes like extremely tart cherries. Just insanely tart cherries. Like tarter than a lemon. Wow, how much citric acid is in there? It's the number one ingredient is citric acid. That explains this. This is citric acid and red food dye. Extremely tart cherries um, that are wrapped in a very, very thin, 
amount of chocolate. I'll try one more sip off the top here. My face is on fire from drinking that, Jesus. Other than it being extremely tart, honestly, it tastes an awful lot for a second, like, like a cherry cordial, like it comes in a box. It's really, this isn't actually that bad. I have a straw. I'd like to see what it tastes like, not from the top. Yeah, hold on a second here. Let me see something. What does this taste like, you know, partway down? It's disgustingly sweet. No doubt about it. But I mean, it does taste like a cherry cordial. It tastes like candy. I can actually feel myself slipping into like a diabetic coma. This one almost shows promise though, because like these are flavors that make sense together. Like coffee, chocolate, cherry, believe it or not, th those guys work well together. And I wasn't sure that I was going to want to remake this uh, when I started this episode, but I, I did leave myself that out because I had this idea that I would. Yeah, I mean, with the, with the look at that, it's just red, right? Like, I mean, that's it maybe it doesn't, it's red. Wow. Oh man, there's a lot of chocolate on that one. Oh, maybe a Coke will help? No, not really. That's a very strange combination. That has some weird stuff. <laughs> so my lips have just been red this whole time, I guess. Oh my God. I'm gonna take a break now and go upstairs uh, and clean out my shaker. Uh, I'll be right back after this. So that's all well and good, but it's, uh, it's not quite what we see on the show, is it? Because in the show, it most certainly involves ice um, and it is easily poured from a pitcher. So let's try to make something that adheres to the format that we see in the episode orb. Do not worry, this is still going to be terrible, but I'm going to need my shaker. Um, and to my shaker, I want to add three ounces of Kahlua and three ounces of Hershey's chocolate syrup. Okay, that's good. Uh, I'm going to crack some ice uh, over this and I'm going to shake the Dickens out of it. Um, I'm going to basically open pour this with the exception of this one very large ice cube that I'll hold back with my spoon. And uh, now I will liberally garnish it with a dusting of uh, red Kool-Aid powder. It sets up nicer on the ice actually too. That's more than enough. Feeling great just looking at it. Um, in the episode, I'm pretty sure it's a Garnish with an orange wedge or orange wheel. So let's make an orange wheel real quick. And um, umbrella here. Doc loves his drink umbrellas. Uh, I think we better use this over large straw. I don't think a thin straw is gonna work out really well here. Let's sit on the bottom. Okay, great. And there it is, a red mocha cooler, a little bit more like what we saw on the show. It's fun. It actually is kind of neat the way you have these red streaks starting to run down through it. It really kind of <laughs> answers to its namesake. So this is a bad drink, no question about it, that is in the spectra of things that a, an idiot would make. <laughs> it's not, it's not purely torture. This feels honest. This feels like a mistake. <laughs> this, feel, this doesn't seem like it's just designed to beat you up. For somebody with a very serious sweet tooth, like I think the doc must have, because he's a bit sweet. This is probably a nice treat. It is a lot like um, a chocolate milk with a little bit of a coffee kick in it. The red part, the Kool-Aid, really gets incorporated into the flavor profile in your nose, you know, like as a olfactory, like a garnish. Um, it does not really play into the flavor. It's not mixed in, so how could it? Um, if you wanted to, maybe it's like the idea is like, well, hey, it's your red mocha cooler, so like mix it in as you see fit, you know? Let the, uh, one of those things that you let the guest decide how they like it, right? So I'll just mix it in a little bit. It will only make it about halfway down the drink. Yeah. Now I'm getting that really tart bite up front. Not like the last thing where I was just drinking off the top. Really tart bite up front that settles into a chocolate um, Kahlua thing. Mostly chocolate. It really just tastes as close to a chocolate cherry cordial you can imagine. But the thing about that is those are tiny little, like a little snack, like a, a bite, one bite, right? This is a very large drink. It's far from the worst thing I've ever had. I am never gonna drink it or, or make it again. I have no desire to see this drink ever. But it does not immediately make, it doesn't make me sick the way other stuff has made me ill. So this, this, this was Doc Tales. 
There's a few more Docktails out there. Uh, the Hot Mummy comes to mind, the Slim Jim Fizz. If you guys wanted to see more Docktails. Uh, I don't know if anybody will want to see more Docktails. I kind of got to end this episode. I'm not feeling good, guys. But hey, <laughs> thank you so much for watching me hurt myself and for coming on around the YouTube. I hope you like the show. Oh, God. I hope the Adventure Brothers comes back. I, I really am not joking. I heard a rumor that there was some talks about moving it to HBO Max. So hopefully it comes back. That'd be great. <laughs> Guys, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta get out of this. I gotta get off this set. Uh, I mean, I gotta get out of this bar. I gotta go. So uh, thank you for watching. If you uh, like the show, I hope you will subscribe, like, and comment. The, the stuff that the tuber asks uh, they're the people to do. Please do that. That's great of you. Thank you. I really genuinely mean that. And I would love to be more uh, enthusiastic, but I'm not feeling so good at the moment. But actually, you know, we've done a lot of episodes of How to Drink over the past five years. And um, I hope that, uh, you know, there's, for instance, you know, you watch The Cursed Cocktails Volume 1. That's a classic now. That's a classic. And I've done these other three episodes as well. And um, please take a look at them because this is a fun show and we're all having a good time here. So I hope you'll hang out and have a good time with me. I think I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go pray at the porcelain temple now. I think this might be the first puking episode of How to Drink. I think that's happening. I think that's gonna happen now. Mm.